Well, praise God. Thank God for Jesus. Praise God. We thank God for another opportunity to come and share with you the precious word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Truly, he is worthy to be praised. I am Pastor James E. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God. So glad to be able to declare once again to you, to the world, that Christ is the answer to all of our problems. They are complex. There are so many. Praise God. But there's nothing too hard for the Lord. But all things are possible to them that believe. If we can only put our trust in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We could see a lot of changes in our personal lives. We see changes in the world. But we have to put our trust in the Lord. But praise God, I do have a word. I have a word from the Lord just for you today. Praise God. And again, that word is found in John 3. John 3, 3. Praise God. The book of John, the book of John, the gospel of John, third chapter. We're just going to look at that third verse again for today. And it reads thusly, and Jesus answered and said unto him, him being Nicodemus now, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Father, we bless you today. Lord, thank you for this, another opportunity to come. Lord, and share your word today. We thank you, Lord. I thank you for, praise God, for choosing me, Father God, for this all just task here that you've given me. And Lord, I pray now the Holy Spirit anointing will go before me. Lord, touch the ears uh, of your people. And uh, in Jesus' name, Lord, we'll be mindful. We'll give you all praise. We'll give you all glory in his precious name. Amen and praise God. We are, we are, we are talking about Praise God, what the Lord is talking about. He says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Christ is our new birth. He is the new birth. Christ is our all in all. He's our everything. The new birth, that's what Christ is to us. And uh, my question to you is, have you been born again? Have you been born again? Now, Again, these words were spoken to uh, a, 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 a religious leader, spoken by Christ now, uh, and doing his teaching to a religious leader who undoubtedly thought he had a secure place in heaven. Praise God. When he died, he thought he was on his way uh, based upon his position that he had in the church at this time and the part of the abundant work that he had, uh, had done. But now the walls of his hope, came tumbling down, praise God, when Christ announced to him that he must be, he must be born again. And praise God, even today, in 2020, 20, 2021 here, praise God, even today on this July 19, 2021, there are still religious leaders who entertain the thoughts of going to heaven as well as, praise God, regular old church folks who have never been born again never been born again. And on yesterday, praise God, on Sunday, I, I began this series by asking the question, have you been born again? And John gives us some very clear signs that we should pay very close attention to if we really want to know uh, our true status before the Lord. If we really want to know whether or not we've been born again, all we have to do is compare ourselves with the Word of God. Amen. Now, the first sign that we looked at on yesterday, uh, and praise God, was our changing attitude uh, towards sin. Praise God, a born-again person has a change of attitude towards sin, based upon the scriptures now, based upon what the Word of God says. In 1 John 3, 9, we looked at it yesterday. Let's look at it briefly again. 1 John 3, 9, John the Apostle says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remain in him. Christ's seed remain in him, and he cannot sin because, he says, he is born of God. Cannot sin. And then that was 1 John 5 and 18. 1 John 5 and 18, John says there, We know that whosoever is born of God, he said, they sin not. But he that is begotten of God, keeping himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Now, that's what John says. Praise God. Our attitude towards sin it changes altogether, and uh, we, 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 we cannot at this point, uh, cannot elaborate again on this first sign that we kind of went into in depth on yesterday, except to say that, praise God, the born-again believer can no longer live in sin. 
No, no, you can't even, praise God, we can't think, uh, constantly think upon sin or, or, or tolerate sin in our own lives. We can't do that, praise God. Or we can't even turn a blind eye, praise God, to those who around us are sinning. It's going to affect us even in that way, praise God. In other words, the things that we used to love, praise God, now we, we hate them now. That's the born again believer. And this is the sign. Praise God that your family is your friends and all your acquaintances. Praise God. They will recognize immediately. Oh, they'll recognize it. Well, if you're really born again, and they will comment upon it, this sudden change in your behavior. Like, you know, what happened to you? That's what they say, you know. So now, in light of God's word, my question to you today again is, are you born again? Praise God. Are you born again? Now, the second sign that we want to examine today, praise God, is our changing attitude toward the world. Praise God. Sin first. Now, our changing attitude toward the world. Based upon scripture again, 1 John 5. Back in John, 1 John 5 and 4. 5 and 4 says, John says, that whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Praise God. The believer, the born-again believer, overcomes the world. And if you look at Galatians 1 and 4, Galatians 1 and 4, it says the mission of Christ. Now, what was the mission of Christ? We must keep that in mind. Christ gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and of the Father. Now, his mission was to deliver us from our love, our attraction, our addiction to this present evil world. Amen. And praise God, undoubtedly, praise God, this is the greatest temptation that all mankind uh, faces today, loving the world, hmm? enslaved by the things of the world. Praise God, that's the problem. And this is why when the devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness, praise God, in that Matthew 4 there, when he tempted Jesus in the wilderness, he pulled out his big gun, his biggest gun, his number one weapon against the people of God, his most successful weapon, praise God, the one that he used on Adam and he used it on Eve thousands of years ago. What is it? The things of this world. The things of this world. Praise God. Matthew 4. All this, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. He all three of those, praise God, he used against Adam and against Eve. Now let's look at Matthew 4 and 8 there. Matthew 4, 8, and we're gonna look at that ninth verse also. 4, 8, and 9. It says, Then the devil taking him, talking about Christ now, he took him what? Up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Praise God. And he said unto him, in that verse 9, all these things I will give you if you would just fall down, Jesus, and just worship me. Praise God. Now, Jesus, of course, was victorious uh, over this worldly temptation here. And so will all of his born again children. Praise God. If we're born again, if the spirit of Christ, that same spirit that he used to put the devil to flight, if that spirit, that born again spirit is in us, then we will react in the same way against the worldly temptation. Now, but if Satan can get us now, if Satan can get us to focus on the breadcrumbs, I call them breadcrumbs of this creation, the things of the world, and not the creator himself, he knows that at, that at the end of these breadcrumbs that we're chasing out here in the world is what? His throne. Hmm? The, where we worship him. Praise God. That's what he wants. Devil worship. The devil wants us to worship him. But if we follow the world's breadcrumbs, they will eventually take us to worshiping the devil himself. And that's why uh, John says in 1 John 2, 15, he says here, uh, love not the world. 1 John 2, 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. He said, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Praise God. That's what he said. If any man love the world, the love of the Father it's not in you. Praise God. So we have to, praise God, be delivered a change of mind about the things of the world. Now, in the next verse, John proceeds on that 
uh, 16th verse of 1 John 2, he proceeds in that next verse to point out the three greatest enemies in the world. Praise God. He said, for all that is in the world. First John, first John 2, 16. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And they are not of the Father. They are not from God. Praise God. They are of the world. And in other words, they are of the devil. Praise God. These are, these are things the devil has put in the world to distract us, to take our attention away from God. But now, in the lastly, in that first John 2, uh, 15, he points out to us the foolishness. The foolishness of uh, us spending our whole lives pursuing this, things of this world, which are all temporary. They're not, they're not permanent. But yet and still, the devil has somehow uh, bamboozled and tricked us into chasing after the things of the world. Praise God. In that first John 2, 17, he said the world passes away. This world will pass away. And the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God, he said he's going to abide. He's going to abide forever. Praise God. But now, but many, many during the uh, uh, days of the apostle John, praise God, as well as today, praise God, have, have turned from following Christ simply because they are not born again. They don't have uh, that heart within them to continue on. They, they never really experience the peace. You never experience the joy, the freedom that comes with the new birth. Hmm? Christ is our new birth. They have not experienced that. So they were drawn back. They, went, they started out, but they were drawn back into being slaves to sin in the world. Oh, well, in these 49 years, I've seen so many. Praise God, come into the church, join the church, and praise God, and they just stay for a minute or two, and they're gone. Why? They're not born again. Praise God. If you're not truly born again, it's going to be hard to stick and to stay. Amen? And Paul's letter to 2 Timothy. Praise God, 4 and 10. Good example. He says in, in, in 2 Timothy uh, 4 and 10, for Demas, Demas has forsaken us. What's up about Demas? He used to be a, a, one of the followers of Paul, one of Paul's helpers, uh, having loved this present world. That's why he, he went back, present world. And Titus uh, left and also went to Demacia, he says. But now he, the world, the enticement, uh, the pull, the enchantment of the world kind of pulled him back over there. First John 2, 9, uh, John said these words here. They went out from us, hmm? but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would not have, no doubt, have continued with us. But then he said, but they went out from us that they might be made manifest, revealed that they were not with us from the beginning. If you go back, that means you never was there. You never was born again. You never was really truly saved, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. If you go back, praise God. You know, my friends told me, uh, well, uh, when I got saved, you know, well, he's just tripping right now. He'll, he'll, he'll be back. He'll be back out here. Praise God. He'll be back out here with us and we'll be running and doing what we used to do and having fun. But praise God. Guess what? 49 years. I hadn't gone back yet. And I tell you what, I don't come too far. Praise God, all my bridges burn behind me. It's straight ahead. I have no other recourse but to go straight ahead. Praise God. But now once a person is born again and experience, praise God, the power of the Holy Spirit, praise God, and have tasted the good word of God. Hallelujah. The world's attraction, the world's fashions, recreations, and amusements, praise God, as well as his entertainment, all these entertainment, all the world aspirations. They lose their holds. Praise God. They lose all their hold on born again believers. They drop off like garments falling off our backs. They no longer can hold us when you're truly born again of the Spirit of God. Praise God. James 4 4. James 4 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Mm. Whosoever therefore would be a friend of the world is an enemy. You're enemy of God. That's what he said. If you're a friend of the world, you're enemy of God. And then that verse, uh, Luke 6 there, Luke 6 and 26. Luke 6 and 26 said, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. 
Praise God. That was a time when I was kind of popular, you know, with the people in my circle. They thought I was pretty cool dude. Huh? But praise God, when God saved me, when I was born again, they didn't have nothing good to say about me anymore. And I'm pretty sure that you know what I'm talking about, because some of you probably be listening right now. Maybe you you change your attitude. Your attitude even changed toward me, even though I'm this I'm a better person. I am a better person than I was from the beginning. Amen. See, but now one thing I found out, you cannot be popular in the world. You can't even be popular in the world and loved by the Lord at the same time. See, when we're born again, praise God, when we're born again, it, it, it's just natural. It's natural for the world to hate us. It's natural. Just as natural as it is for a snake to bite me if I wander into his territory. Praise God. It is the nature. It's the nature of those who are not born again, just like the nature of the animals to protect themselves. Oh, God, I think it's in the DNA almost now, huh? Praise God. And that even include your parents, our parents, our siblings, our longtime friends. It's a natural reaction of all of them, praise God, that are not born again to change, to change in their attitude, praise God, toward those that are born again. It's a natural thing, praise God. But now God commands to the born again believer, praise God, they're, they're the same today as they were yesterday. The same commands goes out to the born again believers. Huh? Praise God, the children of God. First Corinthians, I mean, second Corinthians, praise God, we know it mostly by memory. 617 there, come out from among them. Be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And, and the Lord said, then I will receive you unto myself. In other words, we have to come out. The born-again believer has come out. Hmm? Out from uh, that lifestyle that we used to live. Now, that's how you can know whether you're born again because you, you don't, you're not the same person. You, you, there's a new man in you. You can't continue to live the way that you've been living. Praise God. And Jesus prayed in that 17th chapter of John. Jesus prayed that his born again believers uh, be separate, be, 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 be separate from this world there. Praise God. He prayed that in that 17th chapter of John. He prayed that his children would boldly stand up in opposition to the, 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 the pool of the world and the lure of the world, the attractions of the world. He prayed that we would overcome that and declare our allegiance to him only. And to his word, he prayed for us in that 17th chapter of John. You can look at it, 17, 14. 17, 14, that whole chapter is the high priestly prayer of Christ, and he prays for his children. Praise God. But look what he says in 17, 14. Christ says in, in those verses, I have given them uh, thy word. He's talking about his children now, and the world has hated them. Yes, they hate us because they are not of the world as I am not of the world. They hated Christ because he wasn't one of them. And of course, they're going to hate the born again believers because we are not one of them. Look at that 15th verse there. Christ says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Hmm. And then that uh, 16th verse, he said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. 17th verse, he says, sanctify them, separate them. Through the truth, through thy word. Thy word is true, Christ says here. So Christ prays for us, knowing that we would become the uh, uh, scorn of the world because we are different. We are different. They will hate us just like they hated the Lord himself. Why? 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 Because we're different. We are different. Hey, praise God. We don't apologize for that. We're not like everybody else because their God is no longer our God. They hate us. Mm -hmm. We used to serve that same God that the people in the world serve, but now well, we've been brought out of that. Praise God. And they hate us. Praise God. This is John 15, 18. Look at John 15, 18. Uh, I'll jot it down and go back later on. 15, 18, and 19. Jesus said, if the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, he said in verse 19, his children, if you are of the world, the world would love you. Oh, they love his own. They, they love their own. But because you are not of the world, Jesus said, but I've chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world will hate you. That's what Christ says. 
Oh boy, and then you skip way down that 28 verse of that uh, John 15, Christ says, they hated me without a cause. They had no reason. He was good. He was kind. He was loving. But there is a nature in man that hate things that are different. And it's because we are different that we are hated as believers, born again believers. And so it is with the hatred that we, we, we are experiencing so much hatred today among the races, our, our racial things. That's all you hear, racism, racism, all that stuff today. See, God made people different in colors. He made people different in, praise God, hair texture and different in uh, intelligence. Oh, why? Because he chose to. He chose to. Praise God. Look at the variety of plants God made and all their many beautiful colors God made. Look at the birds. Look at the peacock. Look at the colors. God did all this. Look at the many uh, colors of the in the dogs, our dogs that we cherish so much and cats that we cherish so much and the reptiles and the mammals. Look at all the different colors. See, God made them. Hallelujah. God made them all. Praise God. And he looked at his creation and said, it's good. God said, it is good. It is very good. But now along came the devil. Praise God. Along came the devil. Praise God. And planted seeds of hatred into the hearts of his people. And I mean his people. Now you either God's people or you the devil's people. There ain't no in between here. If you ain't saved, if you ain't born again, you are God's people. You are the devil's people. That's what, he's your father. Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. And that's what Jesus said. So, I mean, that's the bare facts. But now the devil, he come along and pl planted hatred in his people. Hatred for the people of God. Amen. Deep down inside and deep down inside, you know, they don't even know why they hate us. People don't, you don't know why you hate me. You don't know why you recall, and I'm just trying to bring you good news. You don't even know why. It's deep down inside of you, huh? It, what is it? Is it the Hatfield and McCoy syndrome? Is that what it is? Nah, nah, nah. It's DNA? No. Well, it's in your heart, isn't it? Huh? The devil has planted a seed of hatred in the heart of his people, and now we got turmoil in the world today. Huh? And all we need to do is turn back to Christ. Huh? Turn back to Christ, repent of our sins, and praise God, be born again of the Spirit of God. Come out from the world. Love our love for the world. Praise God. Nevertheless, now, I, I, I say to all of my born again brothers and sisters, our Complete victory over the world does not come, praise God, by hiding from the world, hiding from the world, hiding from the world, like the monks do maybe in the nuns. They can hide out. But God ain't told us to hide out nowhere or try to make peace with the world. We are not to make peace with the world, but we are to confront the world views, confront them, the issues, exposing the lies that are part and parcel of the very fabric of this world. That's what God called us to do. Praise God, which is which is what basically what anti Christianity, anti morality, anti holiness, anti Christ. That's the very fabric of this world, and we are to expose it. We are to speak out against it because it's not of God. Praise God. Now, and, and remember now, the born again believer. Praise God. Praise God. The born again believers. This world is not. Your home. All born again believers. This is not our home. We're just strangers here. That's what the Bible says. Paul said in, in Hebrew, we're strangers and pilgrims here, traveling through this wasteland. That's what it is. A wasteland of thieves, sodomites, liars. Praise God. And we must arm ourselves with the word of God. Be filled. Be filled, man. Don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We ought to arm ourselves with the word of God, born again believers. Praise God with the sword of the spirit. What Bible call this a sword of the spirit? Ephesians 6, 11. Praise God. Most of us are, are familiar with that. Put on the whole arm of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We must put on God the armor, the word of God. Praise God. We must have the word of God. And praise God to our young believers today. There are some young believers that have recently been born again. Let me let me say a word to you just for a minute here. You know, I uh, enlisted in the Air Force at the tender age of 17. In other words, my parents had to sign for me because I was not of age. I wasn't 18 
And one reason I, I did this is because I wanted to uh, uh, serve my country. And I guess you could say I was patriotic. I guess you could say that. And I'm still, I'm still patriotic today. Yes, I am. But not to this world, though. Not to this world. But to a better country. A better world. Not made by hand. Eternal. One that's eternal, the Bible says, the eternal in the heaven. Praise God. You and I, uh, we are in the army of the Lord, young people. I know you're young and, and you hadn't lived a long life and, and, and you've been called now to serve the Lord, which will cause you to push away from many of the world things that we, the glamour of the world today. But remember, we're in the army now. You young people, we're in the army of the Lord. We're fighting for that incorruptible crown. Praise God. That's what the Bible says. Praise God. You young people, praise God. And I know for young people, temptations are even greater. Yes, they are. Hmm? I, I'm old now. I've gotten old now. I'll be 74 in another month or so. And so, you know, you know I, I'm just about, I'm just about on my last leg as far as going home to be with my father. Uh, but now you young people, I know you're young and the enticements are even greater. Praise God. But remember, the greater is he that's in you. That him that is in the world, praise God, because you are young, the devil thinks that he can take advantage of you, praise God. But remember what John wrote now, John, back to John in 1 John 2, 14. Look at what John wrote there and be encouraged. 1 John 2, 14, John said, I've written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abided in you and you have overcome the wicked one. Praise God. You have overcome already. He called the Lord called it those things that be not as though they were. You're already uh, more than a conqueror. Just praise God. Go ahead on. Live your life for the Lord. Praise God. Now, the fight of faith is a must fight. You're going to have to fight. And we will all suffer. We all going to suffer now. Praise God. Because we stand firm on God's word. We will be ostracized. We will be criticized. Yes, we are. But the born again believer, we're going to stand. Praise God. I'm not going to stand on the sideline. I'm going to get on the front line of the battle. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. Praise God. I can't keep quiet. I won't keep quiet. Praise God. Romans 8, 18 says, Paul says, so the, I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. So don't, don't bother with this stuff. Yes, we're going to be suffering. We're going to suffer. Praise God, we're going to be uh, turned away by many people because of our faith, because of their hatred for Christ himself. That's what it's all about. For the born-again believer that overcomes the world, Peter says, that will be a great celebration. Praise God, a great celebration in the heavenlies. In that first Peter 1, 11 there, uh, Peter says, for so an entrance, First Peter 1, 11, for so an entrance, Entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly. An entrance. We're going to make a, a grand entrance into heaven, into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise God. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has in store for us. If we would live this born again life, overcome this world and all of its temptation. But in every family, you know, every family, every family, every family, natural, spiritual, their children that does not fare very well. Yes, in every family. It, it is so. It's the same in God's family. Hmm? They're overcomers of the world, and then they're going to be those who struggle to disconnect from the world. But I love what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3. See, we may have bad children in our, our family. We may have sons and daughters that does not live up to our expectation, but they're still family members. So it is in God's family. Look what he says in 1 Corinthians 3, 14 and 15. Paul says, if any man works abide, which he have built that on, I'm talking about your work for the Lord, he shall receive a reward. If you if you live that overcome a life, you're going to be rewarded. But now 15 says, but if any man works shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Going to be saved. huh? All of God's children is not going to come up to the expectation. But thank God they're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. But I want you to strive to be an overcomer, though. Strive to be an overcomer. Praise God. And as I close today, praise God, my question to you again is just this. Are you born again? Have you been born again? Huh? Is Christ your born again experience? Is he your experience? I'm talking to the person now. Huh? Has your love for Christ overcome the love for this present evil world? Praise God. That's the question. 
Revelation 2, 7. Praise God. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh the world. Praise God. Overcometh the temptations of the world. He will eat of the tree of life, he says, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Praise God. You can't be born again today. That's the good news. You that are listening to me. You have looked at your life. I'm, you have looked at your life against the word of God. And you know whether or not you're born again right now. But you can't be. Hmm? First of all, you must repent of your sins. Yes. Repent of your sins. For seek God's forgiveness. Ask God for his forgiveness. And he promised that he will in no wise turn us away. If with all our heart we seek him. Praise God. God said he will. Praise God. Give you this born again experience. Praise God. On tomorrow. God's will now. We're going to look at this third, a third and a fourth. Uh, sign of the life of a born again believer. God's will on tomorrow. Father, we bless you today. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Once again, Lord, to come and share your word with your people today. Now, Lord, you're the anointing of God. We may, may it go forth. May it convince, convict. May it bring souls closer to you, Father. And Lord God, we'll give you all praise. Give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, brother and sister, if you like this video, go over hit that like button over there. And then just kind of walk it back a little bit. Hit that subscribe button. Praise God. And when I come again, God's will tomorrow. Praise God. I mean, it's in God's hand. If God get, wake me up, praise God, and, and, and speak to my heart, I'll come again tomorrow. I give you another word straight from the Lord. Until that time, may God bless you. May God keep you.